one of the other things that I want you to do is to leave this discussion more confused, more muddled, less clear, less certain. Putin has already lost in terms of what he was trying to achieve in Ukraine. Remember, this was about, for Putin, erasing Ukraine from the map, ending its independence, subsuming it into Russia. That's failed. Oops. What he hears from his advisors, uh, we were looking at a potential disaster um, as Gaddafi threatened to massacre uh, large numbers of his population. to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq, I mean of Ukraine. <laughs> It's been more than six months since Ukraine launched its highly anticipated counteroffensive. The goal was to decisively push Russian forces back, liberate communities, and seize momentum on the battlefield. At best, it's been a deadly, grinding slog. Others have dubbed it a failure. So what's Ukraine up against? A sprawling, well-defended front line, and now also growing political friction. President Zelensky, what does, it, what does it mean if you don't get aid by the end of the year? Ongoing skirmishes between the United States and the Iran-backed Houthi rebels in the Red Sea are further legitimizing concerns that the war in Gaza will expand to a broader war in the region. To get a message to the Iranians, keep the American hostages until after the election and the Reagan administration will give you a better deal. That stunning reporting this weekend by the New York Times is prompting a rethinking of presidential history. Nous sommes très loin d'un élargissement effectif à l'Ukraine. Et je l'ai dit, de toute façon, quel qu'élargissement que ce soit, supposera une réforme en profondeur de nos règles. Putin did not want this war. He went to great lengths before February 24th, 2022, uh, when the war started, to uh, head it off at the past. He wanted to come up with a diplomatic solution. And then shortly after the war broke out in February, uh, he was negotiating with the Ukrainians uh, to work out a deal. Uh, and at that point in time, he was not talking about uh, incorporating any uh, Ukrainian territory, uh, save for Crimea, which had already been annexed, uh, into uh, Russia. And all he really cared about, it's quite clear from all the reports of the people who were involved in the discussions, was NATO expansion into Ukraine. He wanted a neutral Ukraine. And if he had gotten a neutral Ukraine, this is right after the war started, I believe there's a good chance the war could have been shut down. But it was the Americans and the British who moved in and basically told Zelensky that he had to walk away from the negotiations because we believed that we could win the war. We meaning Ukraine plus the West. Uh, and in 2022, it actually looked like that might be the case. But now it's quite clear that 2023 has been a disastrous year for the Ukrainians. 
And if anything, the Russians will win the war. This is the slogan of the Houthi movement, a small rebel army who now rule over 70% of Yemenis. They've taken a huge stand in the Red Sea. They've created a huge disruption through their blockade of major uh, shipping uh, through this economic hub. And so I wanted, I'll pull up your article because I know you just wrote about this. Mm -hmm. But perhaps you can tell the audience exactly <coughs> what's going on and why is this so significant? Because it feels like the United States is almost gearing up for another war, uh, believe it or not. Um, in response to this, uh, despite the fact that for years we've been told, you know, Ansar Allah, the Houthis, they're they're no big deal. They're no problem. So so help us help us clarify what's going on here. <laughs> the, the, these are real badasses. <laughs> the first thing that we should know about the Houthis and uh, Ansar Allah, especially as organizers, they are real badasses. Because uh, for them, it's a question of purity. Um, they are not in it for the money. They are not in it for influence. They are not in it to conquer territory. They are not in it for to receive handouts from uh, wh whoever that might be. Uh, their relationship with Palestine is with the spirit of Palestine. It's not necessarily a direct relationship with Hamas or Islamic Jihad or any other uh, Gaza um, organization, for instance. It's, it's with the, the fate of the Palestinians as a whole, which they th the way they interpret it is a very noble cause. So they have to be allied to it. So their decision to basically attack very, very important. This is not explained across the West. This is not a blockade of the Bab al-Mandeb or the Red Sea. This is a blockade of ships that are going to Israel or delivering whatever it is to Israel. This it's completely different. Uh, you just if you just imagine. Um, uh, sorry, uh, compare what's been happening for the past uh, day or two where. Russian oil tankers, they travel the Bab al Mandeb Red Sea undisturbed. And the Yemenis already said that on the record. No, we're, we're, we won't do anything against Russian ships. Problem is these Western ships who are delivering uh, whatever that is to, to Israel. And they are very, very specific. Coming, coming back to this uh, fascinating possibility that the BRICS may be behind uh, what Yemen is doing. Of course, we don't have a, we will never have a smoking gun about that from anybody. This, I, I would consider this a, a fascinating, a juicy uh, working hypothesis, right? But the fact that the Saudis and the Iranians both said, no, we're not going to get into your armada. The yeah. fact that basically they are not doing anything against Yemen. The fact that the Saudis themselves picked up the phone called the yeah. White House and said, don't do this because we know that these right. guys are badasses. We have been they bombing know. them to hell for seven years. They're still there, and basically we lost our yes. war, which yep. they did, right? So, and, and from the point of Egypt, it's more complicated because Egypt, Egypt, they don't have a lot of margin of maneuver. So Egypt probably was advised Let's put it this way, by, 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 by the bricks in the, in the background. Look, don't do anything for the moment. Let's see how they react first. And then we must have a concerted strategy. Because from now on, and even before BRICS 10 starts in a little over a week from now, these major strategic decisions, they have to be agreed upon by the 10 BRICS. Because now they have the... Uh, psychologically, in their minds, they know that they are the new G7. And they know that the whole global south is looking at them for leadership. So they need concerted decisions. You cannot have uh, one or two members going uh, <laughs> astray. or no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. And obviously, this uh, uh, connects us directly to the vortex, which is Russia-China. 
And it's not by accident that we have this week another one of those ultra high level Russia China meetings with Mishustin, uh, Russian Prime Minister, meeting Xi Jinping in person in Beijing, discussing at the highest level everything, including, of course, West Asia. More confused, more muddled, less clear, less certain about what China is doing in the global south. It started really when the Obama administration rejected China's appeal for a greater share and a greater stake in the International Monetary Fund. China then turned around and said, listen, if you're not going to give us the room to move in the international system, then we're going to create our own space. It's not a one for one like the kind of the discussion that happens in the United States is that uh, China wants to replace the United States. There is no indication that that is true. China does want to create more room in the international system for it to move and maneuver. It also wants to weaken the Western-led international order. We're going to talk about that when we talk about the Gaza war. And when you consider China's lending experience globally now, $170 billion just to Africa alone, in many ways that dwarfed what the World Bank was doing, the Global Development Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, and the Global Civilization Initiative. If you look at the speed with which the BRI move from you know zero to a trillion dollars in under a decade, I think there's good reason that we should have confidence that China can execute on these things if it chooses. We are seeing here in Asia that there is a very big push behind the GSI. In some respects, the war in Gaza is accelerating that because there is growing disillusionment with the Western-led international rules-based order. And so these new mechanisms are finding great appeal in the global south. The voting has been completed. And please lock the machine. The result of the vote is as follows. 153 in favor, 10 against, 23 abstentions. Draft resolution A stroke ES10 stroke L27 has been adopted.